So, have you ever had a friend that was your best, best friend that you thought you knew, you loved, you did everything with them, and then just one day they kind of just stabbed you in the back and did something to you that you never thought they would do in your entire life? Well, that's happened to me before. So I agree with the quote, people in masks cannot be trusted. So I took this quote and I thought about it, and I thought that people have masks. You can think of somebody and you can think of somebody in a certain way, and they can act that certain way in front of you, and then they can quickly just change like that and put on their mask and be a completely different person. I had a friend for 13 years. She was my best friend. I've known her since first grade. Her name was Sam. I loved her more than anything. We did everything together. We went on vacation together. My family took her on trips for two weeks, and then one day she kind of just stabbed me in the back and got new friends, and then she started to try to tear me down because I, I'm known as the confident one because I don't really care what people think about me. So she tried to take me, and she tried to tear me down, and she tried to call me ugly. She tried to call me fat. She tried to basically put me to nothing. She would be so nice to other people, and then as soon as she got to me, she'd instantly turn on her mask, and she wouldn't be the person that I, that I knew before. Another example is people in high school. People in high school can be so nice to you, and they can act like, oh my god, I want to party with you, I want to be just like you, I want to be your best friend. But then instantly, they can go run and tell another group of girls that how much they hate you. People don't always look like the way they do. And people always can act different than what they seem to be. So that's why I agree with the quote that people always have a mask because you never know what they really are on the inside. Oh, you get to keep that. Thank you. All right, the rhetorical question's okay to get the attention. I was immediately thinking about, well, what's the example that you're talking about? And that turns out to be what you're talking about. You've got one example that you use, and you give us a good amount of detail on that. Then there's kind of a vague one about in a different context, but it's basically the same story again. It's just uh, the location has changed, and you don't have any details on that. So it's really just the one uh, example that gets uh, the story going there. Uh, presentation, your facial expressions are animated and involved. I like that. Your eye contact, though, is a little bit odd because you have a tendency to kind of look in front of people. You're not looking and engaging us. You are kind of looking in our direction and your eyes are a little downcast. So you, we're getting kind of an averted gaze, but it's a downcast averted gaze and you want to try to engage us a little bit more. Um, sometimes your gestures are uh, expansive and involved and uh, maybe a little overdone and then other times we've got the you're doing the hand washing thing and gripping <laughs> your own hand and bending your fingers back like you're cracking your knuckles and that, that looks like that's where anxiety is coming out also your feet I, 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 I like the idea that you are engaged and animated but it feels like none of that is connected to what you're talking about and forcefully uh, emphasizing a point or moving us from one idea to another, it, it just feels a little bit nervous. So there's too much foot movement that you have to watch out for also. All right, that's where we're going to stop there.